All right, after weeks of looking forward, because all we're talking about is draft, draft, draft on the Pats Interference Podcast, we're going to look back here for 15 off the field with Doug Tide to his days touring uh, with a band. And you and I have very loosely talked about that. I don't want to say loosely, but like in this almost seven (laughs) years of knowing you, I know certain things about maybe allegedly stealing snacks from certain rest stops, different (laughs) cities you've been to. You reference like a domestic tour which implies that you did an international one i don't know anything about your days playing in a band uh your years playing in a band what it was like where you went what you played so i just thought this would be a lot of fun to kind of fill the folks in on stuff that i don't even know as someone who works with you yeah that's fair i i started playing in bands when i was in high school um and we had like varying degrees of success but after my senior year of high school which was 2004 for people keeping track um of my age we we did like a one week tour of the east coast of like the northeast and we weren't like big enough for people to be like booking us so i would i was the person in charge of emailing places to see like if we could play certain venues certain dates whatever it was and it was like very haphazard i had never done it before and there was a few dates that we still had when we were leaving for the tour that were empty but i knew that shows existed in the places that we wanted to play so <laughs> this is getting like right deep into it but we we just like showed up to those places and we're like <laughs> hey we're actions and objects can we play your show or whatever or like i think I, we even said like hey we're on the show and they had to be like uh oh we didn't know this and they're like let us play anyway but we <laughs> we were definitely much more successful um locally around you know southeastern massachusetts but when we ventured out uh weren't quite successful so those were my first days of touring when i had like basically just turned 18 years old i had bought a van uh shout out chris mara from the ames curve bought his old van and we just kind of went out the furthest we got that time was virginia beach virginia um but then went to college and during like before my senior year, I think it was, I had joined a band called Bear Trap with a kid that I had known since I was like 14 or 15 years old, whatever it was. Uh, he was singing in it. It was like his main thing. Uh, it was it was his like baby, basically. But I was certainly down to play guitar in it. Uh, so before my senior year of college, I think we did just like a week or two. Um, or maybe it was after my senior year of college. Sorry, this is like boring, but trying to figure out the dates here. I was in school. Well, look, you, That's you started with, we just show up and told them that we're <laughs> on the list. <laughs> you are not. This is not like going to a club and saying, I'm supposed to be in that VIP booth. This is, we're on stage and yeah. you need to clear out time for us and space it works, and energy yeah. and outlets. Like, and that, that's just how you got in. And it was called what? Action and Objects? So Actions and Objects was the band that I was in in high school. Okay. I was in a band like shortly in, in college, but that didn't really pan out. But yeah, so oh, I think it was, okay. I think it was the, my after my senior year of college because I still had to do some summer classes to like get my degree or whatever. Yeah, you're but, still in summer classes, I hear. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I'm still trying to get that degree. Um but I had to miss school for it. Like I had to miss college to do this, which my, my parents were not very happy about still wound up getting the degree still wind up. But like one of those classes was John Rook, who's the PA guy at Gillette stadium. He was teaching a sports journalism class and I had to be like, Hey, I'm going to miss like two or three classes because like we're going down to Florida in a band. Um, and they were all very kind about it, but that was like my first, that, that was, Action's Objects was kind of like a pop punk band. Bear Trap was like a hardcore punk band. And it's just generally much easier to tour in a hardcore band than it is in like a pop punk band because it's a lot more like DIY, do it yourself ethics, that kind of thing, where like people are always having shows. It's easy to hop onto shows, do all that kind of stuff. I had nothing to do with the booking of that. Um, but I think that was with a band called Pledge. We had to share a bunch of members, all piled into our singer's van, made it all the way down to Florida and back, did all that stuff. Uh, And then the next year when I was no longer in college was when I was basically touring for like a year or two straight, essentially, Uh, whether it be like small East Coast tours. Uh, The last one that I did was a full U.S. tour, which was two straight months, went, you know, across the northern part of the United States to Washington, down to California and all the way back. Did that whole thing. 
Um, and I think the next tour that they were going to go on was in like Central America or South America. And at that point I was like, I should probably get a job. Like I should, like <laughs> I'm, I have a college degree, like, and I think my parents were kind of pushing me to stop doing this. There wasn't like a future to like make money in it. It was basically just stalling adulthood. Um, but it was a lot of fun and nothing like, uh, yeah, I mean, certainly it was, it was a fun time. I, I've seen the entire country. I think there's only like two States that I haven't been to um, after doing all of this, but in order to like make money on the side, I was also selling Yankee suck shirts at Red Sox games and also like Bruin shirts at Bruins games, Celtics shirts at Celtics games, which is another thing that like just a lot of people involved in that, like, hardcore community did that that was like the job that you did either in college or outside of college uh to to make some extra money so like i wasn't doing that bad money wise while also touring in a band um having a girlfriend who's now my current wife and uh yeah it was it was a wild time in my life i'm glad that i did it i do remember you about, i think we were in green day and we had stopped for snacks, which is some sort of story about the van. I want one good van story before we get out. It was something about like, how did, did you know Jen? Like you guys could kind of grew up near each other. I was like, she's a saint. You're like, yeah, I'm going to go tour for two months, go across the country. There might be some roadies or groupies, or I don't really know what's going to happen. And like, that's a different time of your relationship. You don't need to say anymore, but just <laughs> a lot of trust and a lot of faith for like a summer that should have been probably to date the best of your life. Like, do you, what are the flashbulb memories of just two months on the road seeing the United States? I, I I remember like vividly having like phone conversations in like the Las Vegas desert with with Jen, like walking through parking lots in Arizona because the full US tour was also it was it was awful weather in New England. I think it like rained that entire summer. This was 2009. But everywhere else in the United States was just hot as hell. Like it was like 105 degrees at 11 p.m. in Arizona. Like like Las Vegas was so hot. The van that we had did not have air conditioning, and if you rolled down the window, it was like a like an electric window or whatever it is. There was no guarantee that it would go back up. So none of us really wanted to risk that with the like with water or anything else, rain getting in there. So all we had was like. I was in the front seat almost the entire time in the passenger side because our singer liked to drive. Uh, so all I had was like one of those like triangle windows that tilted towards you. But when you're driving through Redding, California, it's a hundred degrees outside. It's basically like someone pointing a hair dryer at your face as you're driving down the road. Like they're like, you're not getting cool from it. You're just not like sweltering in a van. Um, I wound up losing, I think like 20 or 30 pounds on that tour as well. Just cause like wow. we weren't eating a ton. Um, we were like playing shows every night, which you're like, you're working out and sweating, you're sweating in the van, you're sweating everywhere else. So I think I left that tour at like 190 pounds and got down to like 160 pounds or something like that. Um, but yeah, it, there was also, um, yeah, that this wasn't on that tour, but there was one tour that we did with two bands. It was us energy and this band called Debaser, who were all in one. I think it was like a, 15 passenger van but we had all of our stuff stacked in the back and then event essentially like everyone just had to like sit in the rest of the van there wasn't like seats it was just kind of open or whatever and we had we were like so proud of ourselves it stacked up all of our gear done all this stuff like guitars on there everything like that and suddenly there's like a short stop and we're all sitting in the back and all of our gear just fell onto us and Quite quite honestly, we're lucky that no one got like seriously injured because base cabs are like 150 pounds or something like that, 100 pounds. But uh, that was a memorable uh, experience from my touring days as well. Also, our gear fell out of a trailer at one point, and I lost my guitar, which was a traumatic experience that I still don't like talking about. Okay, all right, then we then I won't ask you about it. Yeah. Um, the how many times did you arrive unannounced on this like more professional U.S. tour? Was everything planned by then? Everything was planned by then. Um, I will say that I didn't really know anything about the booking process because our singer just handled everything like that. And like, like, like God bless him. Mike is He did everything like in, but I knew at the time that we would just like jump on other tours. So like 
I think that he was very smart about where like when we were booking a tour, he would see that like two other bands were already on a path. So then he would kind of jump on all of, onto all of those shows. But like they were aware that we had done this. Uh, but that I think that that was kind of his one of his methods in getting booked is that like he would book most of a tour. But then if there was like a little patch where we wouldn't be on places, then he would kind of jump on other stuff. But some of the drives were pretty crazy. Like we would have to do, you know, like 10, 12 hour drives, something like that. Like East coast, it's easy because, and even Midwest, it's easy because all those cities are so close together. But once you get past like Nebraska, like getting from like Colorado to yeah, Idaho or like to Utah or like Washington or something like that, they're just these crazy long drives that you would usually have to do either like at night or first thing in the morning. Um, and I'm usually the person who likes driving, but our singer was just like, I think he was kind of being a hard ass on that two month tour where like he just wanted to do every single drive. So there was only one patch of that entire tour that I drove. And it was only in like from one spot in Florida to another spot in Florida. Otherwise he drove that entire time. And like I said, God bless him for doing that. Cause uh, that was, that was a lot of driving over a 60 day span of time. When you said initially that there was only one part that you drove and this is how like, sophomore my mind is i ran to the scene in dumb and dumber where harry <laughs> dunn goes in the opposite direction like a bit <laughs> colorado and they wake up and he's sitting there ass crack on the road having gone eight hours they sell this gas it's like oh doug's not driving anymore <laughs> um, what, was no. the, what was the best and worst show you did on that that long tour or if it was if the shows oh, were similar man. what about the venues like places that you would go back to just to see a show let alone play again um California was cool. We played with some bigger bands. We played with like a band called Rotting Out out there. So that was a cool show. Specific shows are hard to, to think about. Washington was cool. We played um, in Bremerton, Washington. We also played, we played a few shows in Washington, which was nice because I, I was born there. So I got to see one of my friends I was like growing up with and everything like that when we were out there. But uh, we played uh, Spokane. We played uh bremerton i think we played near seattle as well all those were good there were some bad shows not only ones that we played but also just like he's like we it was it was kind of a rotating cast of members in bear trap where like me and mike our singer were were, were pretty permanent but sometimes for these tours we'd either have to like borrow members from the bands that we were on tour with or just like find fill-ins whatever it was and on that two-month tour our, our drummer was not like the most dependable drummer. So sometimes things would go sideways. I remember Singer being very mad at a show that we played in Birmingham, Alabama, which was not to that many people, but it was still like, wow, that was probably our worst set of that tour. Uh, the one show that stands out that was the weirdest was in, I think it was Eau Claire, Wisconsin. I think that's a real place. I, I hope I'm not making that up. Sounds right. um, like most of the time when we were playing shows, it was like the same type of kids, like kids who liked hardcore and we're coming to a hardcore show whatever it was but like i think that eau claire wisconsin just did it like couldn't sustain that big of like a hardcore scene or whatever it was so it was like it was like juggalos who were at that show it was like like new metal kids it was hardcore kids it was punk kids it was like any type of alternative culture kid that you could possibly think of was at this show and I, it was like in a kid's basement or something and i was like I don't know if this kid's parents even know that this is happening. Like playing a basement show in hardcore is not that uncommon, but like this was for kids that were like, we don't know what's going on here. So we're going to play the show and then just like bail out of here because it was uh, bizarre. Um, so Eau Claire, Wisconsin, <laughs> not sure if I'd go back there, but yeah, shows in Denver were really cool. Shows in California, shows in Seattle. I think part of that is just like being you know, far away from home and, and playing shows where people know your songs or people like go off for you and all that kind of stuff. Uh, we also spent a lot of time in the Dallas Fort Worth area that on that tour, because the other band that we were out with for a lot of the time was this band called decades. That was from either Arlington or somewhere like that. Um, but they were really good friends with the band, this band power trip who we played a few shows with on that tour. Um, and we actually wound up staying. And I think they're, bassist and guitarist house for like a two or three day stretch um just like while we were basically stationed in that area like playing a few shows but like powership went on to have a ton of success and we're like 
a massive band. Their their singer sadly uh, tragically passed away a few years ago, but um, it was just a cool experience to play with a band that like I right now like genuinely love. And knowing that we you know stayed with them, uh, made some connections with them, and, and played some shows with them on that tour. This is all too cool. All right, wrapping up. Uh, I want to end in the obvious place, and I don't know the answer to this. What is Olivia's knowledge of your <laughs> it's like touring in a band what does she like how much can she conceptualize does she know does she ask like what 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 does she know about this how much would she have in the last 15 minutes if she listened to this clip i think a lot of it would be new to her she knows that i've played music she knows that i've been in bands she knows i know how to play guitar um but i think these are these are things that i'll tell her about when she's probably in in middle school or <laughs> high school when she's a little bit more uh, aware of the world i will say that like just being into like punk and hardcore music i think that like some of the music that i listen to that is like heavier or whatever that has like screaming is just like much more normalized to her than it would be to a normal six-year-old who would be in the car being like what the hell are we listening to right now Maybe even Whereas, me. yeah no. yeah exactly <laughs> or, or with you on some of these road trips that we, that we have to go on uh but for her i'll be like Oh, what do you think of the song? She's like, it's good. Like she, she just thinks about it as like, it's like, yeah, there's Taylor Swift and then there's, you know, Bane or whatever it is, like some other, bear trap, yeah. yeah, bear trap. Exactly. Um, not, there's not a ton of videos that exist of me playing live. So I have shown her a video or two of me playing live. Uh, but anything that was from high school only exists on like VHS tapes at this point. And I think there's like one or two bear trap performances that are out there on the internet somewhere. Okay, maybe I can tease one out of you for uh, next episode if this comes back up because I feel like we could do 50 off the field, 5-0 as opposed to 15, but we've gone over 15. Uh, I appreciate you, buddy. That was a lot to learn, and I have more questions. But I, look, I can book you almost any time now, so we'll save those uh, for private. The the shirt selling is a whole other 15, like off the okay. field type of thing. That, that has just as many stories as playing in a band. Awesome. Can't wait. Thanks, Doug. <laughs>